Throughout tennis history, players have retired owing to medical concerns, old age, shifting priorities, and, on very rare occasions, a lack of motivation. However, while Novak Djokovic does not intend to retire from tennis anytime soon, the way his 2024 season has unfolded thus far has been quite puzzling. Welcome to Tennis Flicks, a channel dedicated to the latest and greatest in the tennis world. You will be captivated by today's amazing video, This Cannot Be Happening, Secrets Behind the Tennis World. Let's get started. Djokovic advanced to the final eight at Roland Garros after two five-set thrillers. However, he was forced to retire due to a knee injury. And, given all that has happened in the previous few days, I believe it is appropriate to put Novak Djokovic's year thus far into perspective. As we all know, Djokovic had a dismal start to the season by his normal high standards, and it began to feel as if we were running out of explanations for him. A first-ever United Cup loss to Alex de Menar, Novak was hurt, and some argue that it's only the United Cup. A semi-final loss to Sinner at the Australian Open, Novak was a shadow of himself and the loss appeared to be an isolated incident. However, the unexpected loss to Luca Nardi followed at Indian Wells. It was extremely odd, yet it didn't really matter. The slams stayed the most important thing, and we believed Novak would always come back. So he skips Miami, and we're thinking, well now the GOAT is focused on his season. At the same time, we shouldn't anticipate too much from Monte Carlo, as it is his worst major tournament. But next, he makes a nice run, but comes up short against an experienced Kaspar Ruud. Djokovic also skips Madrid, as many fans expected. So we expect him to win Rome, or at least have a deep run, because he has made it to the tournament's quarterfinals every year for the past 14 years. However, then another stunner occurs. This time, he loses to Alejandro Tabilo, a guy he's never encountered prior. Novak, the six-time Italian Open champion, had just won a regular first-round match against Corentin Moutet when the unusual water bottle event occurred. Coming into the second-round encounter against Tabilo, Djokovic admitted to feeling lost during the match and was concerned about his lackluster performance. We then had to go back to the water bottle event to see how serious it was. His balance and coordination were insufficient, but we had various reactions, with some fans believing it was simply another excuse. Djokovic took various tests and scans following the loss, and all of them came out okay. So, with few matches under his belt, Djokovic grabs a wild card to Geneva, hoping to fire up the engine ahead of Roland Garros. Novak celebrates his 37th birthday in style by defeating Yannick Hanfman, becoming only the third player in the open era that is only behind Federer and Jimmy Connors. I witnessed flashes of brilliance during the match, and I believe that his forehand played a significant role. Hanfman was up three love in the second and even had a break point to gain the double break, but Djokovic turned things around and won the next six games to finish the match in style. Djokovic saved 10 out of 11 break points, and I personally felt satisfied with the way he performed. Djokovic met Talon Griekspoor in the next round, and to be fair, Griekspoor hit the ball better in the first set, leaving Djokovic in an impossible hole. Djokovic saved four set points at 4-5, to five, either with an ace or a powerful serve that Griekspoor couldn't handle. The Joker went on to break Griekspoor and win the first set 7-5. to five. Griekspoor would have been disappointed to let the set slip away from him, but instead of responding, he almost went MIA when Novak offered him a breadstick to finish the second set. He met Tomasz Machac in the semi-finals in Geneva, and I'm unsure how to interpret the match. Machac won the first set by winning five consecutive games after falling down 1-4. to four. Novak wins seven consecutive games, defeating Machac to force a final. Machac wins six consecutive games to defeat Djokovic and end the match. The match had an unusual twist, which is not common on the ATP Tour. However, we did notice Novak straining physically at times. He received a medical timeout at the conclusion of the first set and appeared much fresher in the second. He would, however, fade off in the powerful. Now Djokovic has a season record of 14-6 heading into Roland Garros. To put things in standpoint, 30 ATP players had won more matches compared to Nole at this stage. Also, we're almost halfway through the year, and Novak still lacks a title. In reality, he has not even reached the finals. Everyone has been talking about Novak at this point. Some former players and legends believe it's the age factor. With that stated, Novak confirms he is feeling much better ahead of Roland Garros. The forecasts begin to start coming in. 
Former world champion Andy Roddick believes Djokovic will reach the semi-finals, but fall just short of Zverev. 2024 French Open Round 1 Here's exactly how his French Open campaign unfolded. Novak began his championship defense on Tuesday, facing French wildcard Pierre-Hugues Herbert. Djokovic then won the first set, 6-4. However, an inspired Herbert appeared in the second set, ensuring that there was nothing to divide the two men. It came down to a tiebreak, and here's how Novak won the second set in this forehand cross-court fight. Again, Novak kept it late in the third set, taking victory with a crazy winner. Herbert moved on to double fault and lost in straight sets. I think Herbert played quite well, like the previous top 50 player he is. Novak had excellent numbers under his serve, facing merely one breakpoint during the match. Following the match, Djokovic discussed his dedication to discovering his best tennis. Round 2 Djokovic would be extremely pleased to face Roberto Carbales Baena in the second round, as he tried to get back to form. However, while Roberto Carbales took off quickly, Djokovic struggled to get moving. Meanwhile, Carbales Baena appeared to have the answer to every challenge Djokovic offered. Then, at 5-4, Djokovic took the decision, breaking Carbales Baena and winning the opening set. From then, the match became a very routine affair, with Djokovic eliminating Karbalas Baina from the baseline for a 6-1 victory in the second set. In the third set, Noel had begun to show off, creating highlight reels. After winning two consecutive sets, Djokovic would play an Italian. Round 3 we knew Novak's third-round encounter against Musetti would be an instant hit. Although Novak has a substantial advantage in their head-to-head, -head, he has occasionally battled against the Italian. Novak broke Musetti at the death to claim the opening set, and it appeared like he was already out of breath. But after rushing to a 4-1 to one lead in the second, he managed to perform in some way. It did not quite go as planned. Novak's uncharacteristic mistakes, along with Musetti's talent, raised the set's level. When Djokovic blew a set chance on serve, Musetti realized it was now or never with him. Round 4 Djokovic played Francisco Cerundolo, the 23rd seed, in the fourth round. Both players had never met before. Cerundolo made it to the fourth round of the event for the second year in a row. Cerundolo's style surprised everyone. Novak got through the first set, playing some excellent tennis himself, yet then Djokovic became hurt, and his performance dropped in the next two sets. Today's video has come to an end. We looked at This Cannot Be Happening, Secrets Behind the Tennis World. We sincerely hope you found enjoyment in gaining insights into the secrets behind the tennis world. For more intriguing content, don't forget to comment on your favorite part of our video and why, like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Until then, we look forward to seeing you in our next video. If you have a video idea for our channel, please comment and our team will respond immediately. Game. Set. Match.